In this video, we cover one of the more amazing parts of fluids, the Archimedes Principle. Archimedes was an interesting person. There are few people who are so important in history that their birth or death actually marks the beginning or end of an historical age. Archimedes' death ends the Hellenistic Age. He invented the Archimedes screw that enabled you to take dry land and be able to pump water so that you could grow food. Today, millions of people's lives are affected by his invention of this. On the other hand, he did many other things. He was able to hold the Roman army at bay. There's a lot of arguments about whether he built the great mirrors or whether he used some other type of propulsion, but regardless of how he destroyed the Roman fleets, the one man single-handedly basically held the Roman army. When his island fell by basically treachery, they bribed a person. They were told not to touch this man. He was that important. But when they went in, they found this crazy old guy drawing in the dirt. And he said something that he probably shouldn't. And so the soldier couldn't think this guy was important. He killed him, which tells you that you also have to communicate with people, even if you're the most brilliant man there is. All right, so the Archimedes principle says this. If you have an object that's partly partially or fully submerged in a fluid. It's got a buoyancy force that pushes upwards and has a magnitude equal, equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. Even today when they talk about, for instance, a battleship, they talk about its fluid displaced, how much tonnage it is displaced. So they can put it in a large tub, measure the amount of water that it pushes out of the tub and from the weight of the water they know how much this buoyancy force pushing up on it is. So this is a way that they can weigh large objects. Now we're just going to apply Newton's laws but let me explain to you how Newton, Archimedes came up with this. It was given a problem. The king of Syracuse wanted to know if a particular gold crown he had been given was fake. You can't destroy the crown in order to determine it. So how do you find if it's fake? Now we know density of gold is a specific number. You could find the mass of the crown, but how do you find the volume? It's an irregular shape. Well, this is the trick that he had to figure out. Now today we have nuclear techniques and lots of ways to do non-destructive testing of materials, but he didn't have that. So supposedly while getting in a bathtub, he got in the bathtub and noticed how the water moved out of the way as he got in. And he was able to determine that the volume that he took up was displacing a volume of water equal to his volume. So by dropping the crown in a tub or other container, water would flow over, he'd catch the water, and he could find the volume of that water. Supposedly he was so excited, naturally he put it in a journal. No. Instead, he ran naked through the streets of Syracuse, supposedly yelling, Eureka, Eureka, which is Greek for I found it. Obviously, you probably didn't want your kids hanging around this guy. He had some social problems, but he was brilliant. So in our problem, we've got an object, like the crown, and we'll just say that it's partially submerged for a minute. So there's a part of it here, this part, that represents a volume Vs, if you were, the volume that's submerged. And on the other hand, the whole thing has an object V0. That's its total volume. And what Archimedes says with the free body diagram is that there's a weight pulling down, but there's a buoyancy force pushing up, and that's due to this fluid. And we can apply Newton's second law now to this problem. So let's see, I have the buoyancy force minus the weight has to equal the mass of the object times acceleration in y. All right, that's just F equal ma. Some of the forces in y equal may. Now we want to be able to find these particular values for b and w. For the weight of the object, I can find that. I know that B is obviously minus the mass of the object, call that MO, times G. And this object here, that's its same thing. That's the mass of the object. But 
the mass of the object times g, which is the weight, can be found by the density of the object times the volume of the object times g. So just taking advantage of the fact that mass times volume, I, I'm sorry, density times volume equal mass. Now we can also can find this b. It says it's the weight of the displaced fluid. So the volume of the fluid that's displaced is the same as the volume of the object submerged. So we have the density of the fluid times the submerged volume. This is going to give us the mass of the fluid times g. And that's equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Now we stick those two facts back into our equation here and we will find that we have the density of the fluid times the volume submerged minus the density of the object times the volume of the object, all of that times g. And that's equal on the other side, the density of the object times the volume of the object. That gives me its mass again times a y. This is just the weight of the object. This is the weight of the fluid when you take rho f v s times g. And this is the mass of the object. Now looking at this, we can see that we've got some things that are similar. That is the volume of the object here. But if the object is not fully submerged, then this value here is going to be less than this value v naught. Now this brings us up to the question, and I've already in fact done this part, I guess, right here, that m naught is rho naught v naught. All right. So let's take a look at some examples. The first one is, let's assume the object is in equilibrium. So a y is zero. So we have rho of fluid times the volume submerged minus the rho of the object times the volume of the object times g is equal to rho naught v naught a y, but a y is zero. So this says that the rho of the fluid times the volume submerged is equal to the density of the object times the object's volume. And we can find the ratio of Vs to V0. If we do that, we find that the volume submerged to the total volume, which I'm going to put a V0 here, is equal to the density of the object divided by the density fluid. Now, the submerged volume of the object has to be less than or equal to the total volume. You can't submerge 130% of an object. That means that if the thing is to partially submerge, that this density of the object has to be less than the density of fluid. So we see that for an object to float, the density of the object must be less than density of fluid. So if you're in a dense material like gold, you may think you can't change it. Let's take the human being. We can spread out or we can shrink up. And by moving our arms, we can change our volume. We can also change our surface area. And by doing that, we can change the effect of our density. By spreading that, you make yourself less dense. That enables you to float. We're very close to the density of water because of the blood. I think in Jimmy Neutron, one of the things they call us dirty bags of water, which is a pretty 
amped statement about what we are. Now let's take another case. What if we totally submerge the object? So now we have the object like this. We put it underneath. Maybe we're holding it and then we take our hand off. Will it go up? Will it go down or stay the same? We can figure this one out as well. Row of the fluid, now in this case we're totally submerged. So the submerged object has the same volume as the object. And we have the density of the object times V naught. We have G is equal to rho naught V naught times A Y. And we can see that we can cancel the volume of the object. And this gives us that the density of the fluid minus the density of the object is equal to the density of the object times a y. And we have a g there. So if the fluid is more dense than the object, then we'll have positive acceleration and it will go up. If the object is more dense than the fluid, then we get a negative value and accelerates downward. It sinks. And if the object has the same density as the fluid, it stays stationary. That is, it has no acceleration. So that's our three cases. Rho naught less than rho f rises Rho naught greater than rho f sinks. Rho naught equal rho f, no acceleration. Take a submarine. By expanding air over a greater volume, you make the sub less dense. And so it can rise. On the other hand, if you pump the air out, pump air out, and fill it with water, so now it fills it with water, the density of the submarine goes up and it sinks. Balance it just right and you won't have any acceleration up or down. So you can dive, you can surface, or you can stay where you are. Everything that you need to know it's in Archimedes' principle. But notice that it's really Newton's law so we used to work this problem. Free by diagram, Newton's law. The only thing we needed was an equation for this force B. And that's what Archimedes' principle gives us. It tells us that that B is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. And we just need to calculate the volume of that fluid and know the density of it in order to be able to calculate what its weight would be. All right, that's it for this tape.